Solving for the big energy challenges in a large country like India means finding cheap and non-polluting sources. Doing so will take multidisciplinary and multidimensional approaches to innovation and scale. Dr. Ari Marshalkar brings a unique approach to finding sustainable energy solutions in his work around green hydrogen. He combines the understanding of the grand vision of scale of innovation and production in his role as chairman of Reliance's New Energy Council and in the past leading council of scientific and industrial research, the biggest chain of industrial R&D centers and labs in India. And now he also has a ground up view on frugal innovation thanks to his participation in many young energy startups. So why is green hydrogen important and why is it a must for a country like India? Oh, it's very, very important. And I'll give you at least three reasons. The first is we import $160 billion worth of energy. All right. We have to reduce that import bill. The second is that we are world's third largest uh, uh, carbon footprint uh, creator because we emit uh, uh, something like 3.6 gigatons of carbon dioxide. So we have to bring that down. And also there is this particular aspiration of creating 450 uh, gigawatts of renewable energy by 2030 within next nine years. And there again, green hydrogen will play a very, very critical role. Right. Uh, you know, green hydrogen, the sound of it, maybe for uh, historical reasons, sounds dangerous. Is that so? <laughs> yes, as well. When you talk about hydrogen, you think of hydrogen bomb. It is nothing like that. Uh, hydrogen is a fuel and therefore all the precautions that you normally take with any fuel uh, will have to be taken. But hydrogen has some advantages. For example, hydrogen is not toxic at all. Uh, secondly, hydrogen is very light. It is one of the lightest elements. So even if there is a release, it just diffuses away, uh, disperses away. The other thing is that there has been a large number of years of industrial practice for hydrogen safety and also fuel cells have been running. Uh, for example, for more than a decade and therefore there are safety protocols that have been developed. So I wouldn't worry about uh, the hydrogen safety as long as the protocols are followed. And on a lighter note, I don't mind saying that while you and I were young, uh, we did have the hydrogen balloons and we have handled hydrogen. Right. So it is safe and that's good to hear. But the other problem is that India cannot afford green hydrogen, at least the way it is today. So how do we make it affordable so that a billion Indians can access it over time? Excellent question. Because if it is not affordable, the billion Indians uh, cannot uh, have it. What are the current costs? The current costs of green hydrogen are like 5 to $6 per kg. How much do we have to bring it down to? 1 to $2 per kg. So substantial reduction. Is it possible? Yes. Through research, through innovation, uh, through uh, policy changes and a uh, whole range of other things. For example, uh, you look at the electrolyzer which splits water. Okay. As the size of the electrolyzer goes up, the cost come down. With scaling, the cost will come down. That's the first. The second is uh, looking at the electrolyzer itself. Uh, you know, the energy efficiency is little low and therefore you generate waste heat. Can you capture it? Also, when you split water, you have hydrogen and oxygen, but we don't give any value to oxygen. But that oxygen is very pure, medical grade. And don't forget that one kg of uh, hydrogen produces at the same time eight kg of uh, oxygen. And that oxygen can be sold at 60 rupees per kg. So valorization of that. Then there is a scope for improving the life of stack to so save 25 years, uh, better efficiency of uh, the membranes and whole range of other systems and also the government policies. For example, we might generate uh, uh, electricity by using wind power in Ladakh or by run of Kutch, for example, uh, the, uh, you know, where the sun shines and we have plenty of uh, land. But there is no consumption either in Ladakh or Kutch. So there is no point in generating hydrogen there. So you transfer it uh, through the grid, uh, the electricity to, uh, uh, let us say, Vizag and generate hydrogen there. And then start exporting because we have tremendous scope for exporting green hydrogen to Southeast. So by all these measures combined together, we can bring the cost down 
from five to six dollars to one to two dollars uh, per kg. I feel confident. It's gratifying in some ways to hear that uh, oxygen is a is a very important collateral uh, output of this process, uh, which of course has uh, the need for which has been highlighted even more so in recent times. So you've always said, Dr. Mashelkar, that you don't believe in make in India or assembled in India, but in invented in, in India. So now that's good to hear. But do we really have that uh, research and uh, innovation firepower to power this hydrogen quest? Yes, of course. I'm dangerously optimistic about our uh, uh, capacity in research and innovation, having spent all my life here and having seen what we have been able to achieve. Now, as far as green hydrogen is concerned, there are three aspects. The first is production, second is distribution, and third is utilization. And each of these we re require research. And most importantly, it is not copying what the West is done, but also doing something that is of our own. You know, you mentioned about my association with startups and so on. So there is one sentient uh, labs, for example. What they have done is very pertinent for India. What they do is that they take agri-waste, for example. We have 200 million tons of agri-waste, by the way. And then they have developed a breakthrough uh, process for microbial conversion of that agri-waste into hydrogen. Now, you can see the impact of this. First and foremost, uh, you have decentralized uh, so a sort of uh, hydrogen uh, generation because this agri-waste is spread all over India. The second is uh, that the farmer's income will go up by 30,000 rupees uh, uh, per acre of that order. That's what you require. Local jobs uh, uh, will be created. And you can see the kind of differences. These kinds of research, I would say not innovation, but innovation, particularly important for a country like India. And if you look at the industrial enterprises, if you look at the CSR labs, uh, etc., whole range of uh, uh, activities have been uh, uh, done, including fuel cells uh, and all other uh, sort of uh, technologies uh, which go in the entire value chain. So I feel very, very confident that uh, uh, not just make in India, but invent in India and make in India has uh, to be the platform. Right. And, and you've also, you know, talked about how we need to go beyond leapfrogging, which I recall is a term that we used in telecom, to pole vaulting, which uh, uh, sounds like it's a much bigger and a more quantum leap. So tell us about how that applies to hydrogen or green hydrogen. Oh, yes. You can uh, just see, see, first of all, what is leapfrogging to pole vaulting? You know, frog leap just a few feet, basically, because he's afraid of the predator. Pole wall, the size of the pole determines the size of your aspiration and that is how we have to go. And for that, you will require technological and policy innovation uh, put together. Let me give an example. We had this program on New Millennium Indian Technology Leadership Initiative which I started in 2000. And 2006, we launched a program on fuel cells, okay, proton exchange uh, uh, membrane uh, fuel cells. Today, thanks to People like Dr. Ashish Lele, amazing leader and uh, other CSR laboratories, you know, NCL plus others. We have now indigenous fuel cell, which competes with the best uh, uh, in the world, a stationary fuel cell, let's say 3KW, 5KW. Now, what can the government do for policy? There are 600,000 mobile towers in uh, uh, India. And each one of them is fed by grid, also has a diesel generating set. And that diesel generating set is highly polluting, as you know. So supposing government has a policy intervention and says, no, within one year, within two years, all 600,000 will be replaced by indigenous fuel cells. You know what is the impact? Huge. It will be thousands of crores of industry that will uh, come up. But more importantly, look at the difference it will make. First and foremost, uh, the carbon footprint will go down by something like seven and a half million metric tons. Second, the carbon dioxide, it will go down by 75%. NOx will go down by a similar amount. Sulfur dioxide will completely vanish. Particulate matter will go down by 80%. But most importantly, because all the indigenous components are manufactured in India, jobs will be created in India just with a switch of a policy. Had the government done it before? Yes. You look at, uh, uh, for example, Ujala. I mean, look at uh, light emitting diodes, you know. Within seven years, it's a world record. We moved from 0.2% penetration 
to 88% penetration. Can you see the huge impact on carbon footprint? So I think it is a combination of breakthrough technology plus policy that can make a difference. Uh, last question, uh, Dr. Mashilkar. So as we think about this and maybe even dream about it, can I actually now think about my own hydrogen powered car or scooter? Oh yes, of course. Uh, yes, on scooter, KBIT technology is doing the work. But as far as the car is concerned, uh, already last uh, 7 October, if I remember correctly, last year, uh, there was a demonstration. You know, uh, I mentioned about uh, the fuel cell developed by National Chemical Laboratory. So they brought in the electrochemical uh, component. And then KPIT Technologies, uh, they brought in the uh, automotive electronics component, uh, uh, the rest of the automation, etc. And together, uh, they have developed uh, uh, already uh, a sort of a car. A bus, for example, uh, for mass transit, that has been developed by uh, Tata Motors and Indian Oil uh, together, of course, with an imported Ballard uh, uh, fuel cell, but doesn't have to be. I mean, we can generate our own, like I gave the other example. So, it is very much there. I think what we need go in is, as I said, talent, technology and trust. We must trust the developments uh, that we had and therefore our car is ready, our bus is ready. We are ready to ride. Right. Uh, we are ready to ride indeed. That's a wonderful note to end. Uh, Dr. Mashilkar, thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure.